Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sharif Ali, um, administrator, creator of Moors in America, MoorsinAmerica.com, and I'm coming at you with my daughter. Say hi. Hi. And we're going to talk about the truth behind Thanksgiving. That's right, the holiday where everybody gets together and eats all the food and stuffs themselves and, you know, mm -hmm. hook up with your family and all that stuff. What do they tell you about Thanksgiving in school, baby? Um, they say that Thanksgiving is more of a holiday where the pilgrims came and the Indians met them and helped them with, well, living in a new land. Okay. But then they betrayed them. Oh, they teach you that they betrayed them? Yeah, but they don't say anything else about it. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit more in depth and talk about Thanksgiving and from a Moorish perspective, Moorish American perspective, okay? So, I'm going to read some things and talk about it and just give my um, perspective on it. And if you want to see more in depth, I'll put the sources cited in the description. So click on the description to see more about it. So, um, okay, <coughs> this is this this thing that I'm reading right here is the truth behind Thanksgiving, and um, it's by uh, Brother Dexter Harper. Okay, and he was just saying, uh, <sighs> Thanksgiving is a holiday where you celebrate the things you're thankful for and spend time with your family and loved ones. Okay? And that's great. That's cool. If everybody's doing it, hey, I'm not even telling you don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I'm not going to act like I didn't have family that came in from out of town and might even go, you know, visiting people and stuff like that. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not saying we're not cooking. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not telling anyone what to do. But I'm going to share something. Because like what they taught me in school and what they taught my daughter, what they're teaching my daughter and what you know anyone else who has children is learning you need to get another perspective so that especially for Moorish Americans so that you can educate yourself and your children and so that we don't come up believing lies and all this stupid mess alright so um in this thing the truth about Thanksgiving the author was saying that contrary to the lies we're told in the public fool system the turkey bird had nothing to do with the origin of Thanksgiving and an alleged friendship with the Wampanoag Indians and the Pilgrims. They didn't tell us this in school, though. They told us that it was that the original day of Thanksgiving was October between October to no, uh, November in 1621, right? That's what they yeah. tell us, like around that time. And the Pilgrims and the the Indians helped them survive. And in reality, the Pilgrims killed about 91 Wampanoag Indians. Okay, mm -hmm. and there that that actually that that practice of Thanksgiving had been celebrated prior to that that whole um, interaction with the Pilgrims and the Indians, right? Yeah. Okay, so this goes back really far in history, farther back than the Pilgrims. Um, okay, in school we're not really taught good history, not even good European history, even though the Europeans conquered and you know went <clears throat> under their rule you're not even really taught about Europe okay so if you want a real history lesson you have to think about what's not typically taught from a European perspective what you want to say baby okay in the year 711 AD what happened this is a very important and historical year for Muslims do you want to read yeah okay go for it so ever wondered why the you see why you see so many Abru Muslim Arab, Arab, Arab Muslim owned stores called 7-Eleven, which are ran and operated by Arab Muslims. Now you know why. In the year 7-Eleven AD, the great Moorish warrior Gabriel Gabal Tariq, Gabal -Tariq, Tariq led an army of 7,000 fearless men, 6,700 native Moorish Americans and 300 Africans, Africans, Moorish Africans. <laughs> Africans and 300 Arabs. On the coast of Spain, on April 30th, Tarek and Tariq, Tariq and, his and his army crossed the Strait of Hercules. Hercules. He seized the Great Cliff and, and a portion of land around it, deeming it 
Straight gear. Strategically <laughs> important and beneficial. He instructed his army to construct a fortress on the site, which his men named after him out of respect and admiration. They named this area Rock of Jabal. And it was later corrupted to Rock of Gibraltar. Now, um, like after the Moors arrived, life would never be the same in Europe, right? Yeah. The Moors um basically they brought technology and all types of things to Europe that improved life for Europeans, period. So their life, their, the quality of life in Europe went up drastically after the Moors came. They set up the first um, universities. They set up bathhouses because the Europeans, for the most part, didn't like bathing, didn't like being clean. So they had to like set laws and things to get people used to bathing and, and um um, grooming themselves and set up schools. There's great spectacular advances in medicine, science, architecture, the invention of eyeglasses, the invention of si the science called orthodontics, antiseptics, alcohol, silver nitrate, hundreds of more profound innovations. So <clears throat> the architectural innovation of the great mosque of Cordova, Cordova's in Spain, is still one of the major sites to see in Spain. So people still go to Spain. Spain used to be called Alhambra, or a portion of Spain was called Alhambra. The, the uh, name for that entire region was Al Andalus, right? Yeah. And so um, you can still go to these places in Spain, and there's still mosques there, and there's still elements of that whole um, Moorish Islamic uh, flavor still there. So the Moors also invented the magnetic compass and the astrolab, two medieval instruments that would later help Europeans travel the Western seas and uh, come into contact with all the original peoples of the earth that they would later enslave, okay, for economic growth and prosperity. Okay, so we're, we're, we're hitting on it. We're getting to the, the real meaning of Thanksgiving. So um, Spain became sophisticated and beautiful and stunning, you know, with the, the incredible... Uh, fortresses and the mosques, um, libraries. libraries, schools, <laughs> all the more cities. You have water fountains. You actually had running water. So they wouldn't even tell you this when you talk about the past, like in the year 900, 1100. You wouldn't think people had running water. They actually had running water. They had lights. They had all types of things. And they were these were black people, dark-skinned people. They started to get lighter over time. Um, you had people who were mating with the Europeans. But these were black people, and I don't even want to say black. They were Moors. So um, you had water fountains. Public bathing, restroom facilities were made available to all the citizens in the Moor cities. And they didn't force people to be Muslims. They didn't, you know, people were Christians. You, you had Jews. You had Moors who were Jews. A lot of black Moors were Jews and, and um, Muslims. Okay, so they didn't force people to do, you know, certain religion. Education was offered to all citizens, including women, who were denied education in Europe during this time. More Spain became the light of Europe, which was engulfed in the Dark Ages, okay? And they basically came through and saved them because, you know, you had, like, the Black Plague and all these things that came through and wiped out a ton of Europeans. And, like, it was because of their living conditions for the most part. They were throwing, you know, the excrement out the window, just in the street and then wondering why everyone's dying, you know, because they had this problem with vermin because of the nasty living conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, even the Native Americans later on talked about that in, in America when the colonists, you know, they talked about how they could smell them from miles away. Wherever they set up camp, it was horrible and nasty. So the standard of living in um, Andalus, in Spain, far exceeded that of Europe the Europeans, the rest of the Europeans, Northern Europe, okay? They were jealous and envious of the Moors' accomplishments in Spain. They were also jealous because, like, Moors were seen as almost like gods. And that's how come, like, the standard of beauty, even still to this day, is tall, dark, and handsome, you know? Amore, love. Amore is the word for love. So, like, the Moors were, like, held up in esteem. And even when you go to Europe to this day, you still see statues and paintings and all these things that were made back then to commemorate the Moors. Even though now it's not so... Not so. In, in matter of fact, when you, if you go to Spain now, this is after the Crusades and the Moors have been kicked out. The people have these reenactments where they're defeating the Moors. But back then, yeah, there, there was... They, they were held up in esteem because they improved the quality of living. And then you had the ones on the outside who were still living um, dirty and rugged, and they were jealous. Okay? 
The Christian Spaniards fought hard to rid Europe of their benevolent Muslim conquerors. There were eventually many bloody Muslim Christian battles, and this is leading up to the real reason for Thanksgiving. Okay, um, you had in-house fighting and interracial relationships between the Moorish men and the white Christian Spanish women who remained covertly loyal to Christianity. And this helped to weaken and destabilize the Moorish Empire because they're having children with these um, basically white women, white Spanish women, and they're creating these babies who are going to be like influenced by their mothers and, and influenced by the condition in which they were brought in, you know, because they're like they some of the guys, some of the Moors who were um, powerful, they had like several women. And so these women were actually Christian and they were still loyal to, you know, their own people, their own side. And so this helped to weaken the Moorish Empire over generations. So in the year 1491, this is like nearly 800 years later, the Moors surrendered the city of Granada, Granada, Spain, their last stronghold. So this was the last, the last fortress. The, this is where actually the um, the Sultan was at, I believe. Not the Sultan. There, there, there was an emperor there. So this was the last stronghold. On November 25th, 1491, the Moors signed the Act of Capitulation, after which Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella took possession of the city. The Spanish Christians were thankful for the Moors giving thanksgiving, thankful for the Moors giving up Granada, ending Islamic rule in the country. There was a merry and festive day. This was a merry and festive day for Europeans. And this would henceforth be a day of thanks. So the Spanish Christians were thankful for the Moors giving up Granada. Okay. And, um, you know, this happened over time. I mean, whose empire lasts 800 years? America is not even half of that. America is like what? The United States, rather, is like what? 300 years old? Almost. Not even. They celebrated Bicentennial in the 70s. So it's 230 years old. Right? Moors... Spain was about 800 years old. They fell. They weakened themselves. They fell. They gave it up, and that was Thanksgiving was celebrated. Remember, this happened on November 25th, 1491, and this is where it came from. So the defeat of the Moors brought three options. You want to say that? Yeah. So one was replace their Islamic and Asiatic. Asiatic customs with European customs and Christianity. Two was to be expelled from Spain, or three to face execution. Okay, so they, the Moors, after um, after they gave up Granada, that's all they had, you know, to pick from. They stay there and they convert to Christianity and become um, Moriscos. That's what the ones who converted to Christianity were called Moriscos. I heard that or they leave, get the f out, run, get out of here, or you stay there and get killed. <laughs> Okay, and they would actually go through the Moorish homes and like inspect their homes to see if they saw any stuff to show they were still Muslims. I mean, it was crazy, right? Life was hard for them, and um, you know, it was just it was crazy. It was difficult. So after the expulsion of the Moors, Cardinal Ximenes, Ximenes, backed by Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome and Queen Isabella, ordered the destruction of the beautiful and stunning Moorish libraries and mosques. A lot of hatred behind that. This is what raised them up, having these libraries and schools set up, you know, and having clean living conditions that they hated them. They hated them for that. So many Moors were driven into West Africa and were later captured and sold into America as slaves. Check that out. Some of these slaves came on the slave ships of Christopher Columbus, a Spanish Jew, who was commissioned by Queen Isabella on his voyage to the New World. Many other Moors sought refuge in the country of Anatolia. These expelled Moors, Muslims, from Spain would later be called Turks, as in Turkish Moors. And the country now is called Turkey, okay? Mm -hmm. After the expulsion of the Moors, Europeans began to annually celebrate November 25th. There would be great feasts all over Spain and Europe. Turkey bird was not the main meat dish served. It would be a fat roasted pig with an apple in his mouth, representing or symbolizing rebirth or a new beginning. Europeans ate so much on this feast day that virtually nobody would work the next day. Which explains why corporate jobs give their employees the day after Thanksgiving off. Years later, which is usually November 26th, Europeans began to take revenge on the Moors now called Turks because of the, um, basically the relations they have with the white Spanish women, right? 
the black men Moors uh, were mockingly called turkeys and were called this by European men because of their alleged wild and uncivilized nature, even though they were the ones that were uncivilized. European Christians would now go on a turkey shoot or a turkey hunt. The hunt hunting of the stern um, Moor from Turkey, Anatolia, became a highly uh, regarded act by Europeans at the time. In the process of the turkey shoot, Europeans would engage in the wholesale slaughter of the black-skinned Turkish Moors. Innocent Moors would be hunted down, cold-blooded by European Christians. Many others would be captured, tied by their wrists and ankles with rope and roasted alive. Just like you roast that turkey bird in the oven, right? Don't you tie his wrists and ankles up? You know, tie, tie him up. And Okay, the Moors that were not roasted alive were laid on the ground, and a European male would take a knife and literally carve up the Turk, which is why many people are reenacting this whole carving the turkey bird on Thanksgiving thing. This bloody, carved-up Turk, Moorish man, would then have his internal organs removed and his body stuffed with certain fabric materials, and this is the sick origin of stuffing a turkey bird with bread stuffing or dressing. The Moorish woman were literally carved and cut apart the way meat eaters and butchers today cut up a chicken. Many European men would say, give me a breast or I'll take a thigh or a leg. Just like you do when you're eating this food. So breasts, thighs, legs are all female, sexually related and cognitive uh, body parts. Women are sized up and critiqued off of these things. So, huh. This is crazy, right? Yeah, that's disgusting. After this violent and brutal act, uh, European men would get engage in joyous merrymaking, which would culminate with a great big feast. That is what you call Thanksgiving. And eagerly celebrate every year under the false notion that you are celebrating the friendly act and feast between Native Americans, so-called Indians, and the European settlers called pilgrims. Okay, and um, in regards to the African Americans, descendants of the great Moors that foolishly today celebrate Thanksgiving, yes, they celebrate Thanksgiving and feast the same way the Europeans did after they conquered the Moors on November 25th, 1491. And in this, they celebrate the loss of their own land, the rape of their own women, the murder of their own children, the humiliation of their own forefathers, the fall of their empire. The enslavement of their own people. They celebrate this. What? Go ahead, baby. <laughs> they celebrate this dark and shameful day of their own people and call it Thanksgiving. So, you know, once again, I'm not telling anybody what to do. Just want to put that out there because, like, they're teaching the children that the, you know, just the, it was just a happy time that, you know, the Indians came and helped the people who, like, and got killed yeah, tortured them. And so it's like, yeah, and that's, there was this uh, newspaper put out called The Moorish Guide. It had an article, an old article, it says 1982, November, Thanksgiving for whom? And it's got a picture of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, who, for those who don't know, started the Moorish Science Temple of America, came to help the, the lost found um, Asiatics know that they have a nationality, we're Moorish Americans. And um, pretty good reading. Um, pretty much says a lot of the stuff that I just told you. Um, you don't really know the history of Thanksgiving or that it's celebrating the death and surrender of our own so-called black forefathers. You know? So once again, I mean, look that up. November 25th, 1491. This really happened. The Moors really signed over, you know, Granada, gave it up, and that was a thankful day for the people who wanted to take our empire. And, um, yeah, it's crazy. You know, um, you can even look it up on, on, uh, Wikipedia, Treaty of Granada. Okay? So, basically, you're, if you're celebrating Thanksgiving, you're celebrating the fall of your own people? Yeah, in, in many ways. Like, the Treaty of Granada, known as the Capulation, Capitulation of, uh, Granada. The treaty provided a short truce followed by the relinquishment in January 1492 of the sovereignty of the Moorish Emirate of Granada. So uh, this was in 1491. What happened in 1492? Who came to the Americas and started messing things up? Uh, Christopher Columbus. Yeah, you know? So that happened. Boom. We fell. Ooh, next year. All of a sudden, these guys who they told you thought the world was flat are able to come over here. So, you know, 
it's possible that this was part of the Moorish Empire. Um, I know there's something alluding to that in the Holy Seven Circle Quran and the Moorish Times Temple of America, but I'm not going to really hit on that right now. I <laughs> just wanted to share that with you. Um, go to the website, bookmark it, share it with your family and friends, www.moorsinamerica.com, M-O-O-R-S-I-N-A-M-E-R-I-C-A.com. Um, uh, just click the buttons at the top of the page. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, a like page. You need to like that page. You also need to join the group. The group has like a lot of people in there. Also on YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube. You're probably watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook anywhere else, go to Moors in America. YouTube, forward slash Moors in America, and the number seven. And that's us. Subscribe. We're on Twitter too. Um, and that's. Yeah, that's it. So, there you go. Now you know. You can. All right. Peace.